Ahlan, ahlan, ahlan. Welcome, guys, to this new episode of Listen Habibi. Um, so we're actually going to start a new season, and this is season five, and I'm naming it Motivation. Uh, it's it's definitely been in my plan to talk about motivational topics and to sort of bring in, um, you know, various areas in life where we need motivation. And um, this first episode is going to be about adaptation and growth. And believe it or not, this is the 10th episode of Listen Habibi already. I know there should have been more, but we're already at number 10. Um, And I'm so excited to hop right into it. Also, happy late International Women's Day to all of my women out there. I'm proud of you. I love you. I love to see you win. Um, I cannot wait to uh, just support more women as I grow in my lifetime. So with me today, I have my friend Fahad, and we are going to talk about motivation. And I'm so excited for you guys to meet him. How are you? Uh, Good. How are you? Good. I'm so glad that you could be on the show with me today. Of course. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I'm honored to be here. So please tell us, tell us a little bit about you, you know, like your age, where you're from, what you're about, your your dreams, your goals, give it give it all. All right, so I'm Fahad Alden. I, uh, I'm originally from Iraq, I'm a refugee. I came here when I was six years old. I'm a senior in high school. And when I'm not making YouTube videos on helping people, I anchor the news for my local TV station and I'm also a pub- published author. So yeah, I like to do a little bit of everything. That's amazing. So tell us more about your book. So my book is called A Teen's Guide to Level Up. I wrote it last year around June 18th to be exact. And it was during Corona. And during Corona, I really started to think about my journey from middle school to high school. You know, I was an ESL and I was like, you know, I had some learning struggles as well. Mm -hmm. And I was always, you know, everyone underestimated me and told me I wasn't intelligent enough, told me I wasn't good enough. And I really tried to motivate that myself when I got into high school, when I started believing in myself. So I talked about the power of reading, advice that I'd give to other high schoolers that I wish I had. And I really just shared my experience. So what happened was I got a notebook and just started writing, 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 writing. And within two weeks, I then typed it up and I sent it to an editor and I designed a beautiful cover. And that's how it worked. Yeah. And I really want to show people you can take something like Corona as like a painful experience yeah, yeah. and make it something beautiful. <laughs> that's that's so motivational. Like that is that is inspirational yeah. for sure. So what what was that like, you know, you know, putting all of your thoughts and your experiences into a piece of work? It was it is a bit hard, you know coming from like, I'm a very private person. I, yeah. I don't really like to tell everyone everything. And mm-hmm. I really had to learn to be open and vulnerable in a lot of my pages of my books. I talked about my insecurities, um, a lot of toxic friendships I've had to deal with and things I struggled with. And that's not really easy. So yeah, it really taught me to be more open because when I was open and when I shared my experiences, a lot of people connected with that, you know? Yeah. It's good to keep things to yourself, but sometimes when you, you don't know what other people are going through and maybe they're just looking for that one person to connect. So it really taught me the power of vulnerability and openness. That's, that's amazing. Wow. Um, and so tell me, so you said you were born in Iraq, correct? Yes. What was that like? Like that, you know, do you remember home? Have you been there since? So, um, I was, I was in Baghdad, Iraq, which was the capital. Mm -hmm. And I left around when I was three years old. And then we went to Syria and stayed another three years there. But I do have some memories being there. I have really good memory, like being with family members and stuff like that. And my parents like left the country so we could have more opportunities and be able to have, um, freedom because, my mom always tells me this and my dad always told me, it's like when you were Iraq and you were under um, a dictatorship, they weren't allowed to travel and see the world. And they were, they would literally talk about when they would hear missiles that they would just like close their ears and just hope that it wasn't at their house. And they just oh going God. through a war and living through all that is just so traumatic. And I've never been able to travel to Iraq, but I am forever grateful that I was one of the few people that had the opportunity to get the freedom to be here. 
And yeah, a lot of it, when I do something, I really hope that I can empower other people of color, you know, to do these things. There's not a lot of Middle Eastern people in media. So you're so right. Yeah. It is a big part of my identity who I am. Absolutely. And I think like, I mean, for me personally, I talk a lot about it, but being Lebanese and Middle Eastern definitely like drives me to find the success that I want to and to inspire others and to hear other stories. Because I feel that, you know, when you meet people of such diverse backgrounds, you learn so much and not obviously only Middle Eastern, but, you know, people from all over the world learning about roots and history. And I, mm-hmm. I just find it, it, it's incredibly like, when I hear stories of hard work, it makes me want to work harder. Do you know what I mean? And it yeah, makes me want to keep definitely. pushing. Yeah, that's the thing. I really relate to that too. And growing up, I, in many ways, I did kind of feel sad. I didn't have a lot of people that looked like me that were role models. Right. Um, I remember searching up like famous Iraqis and two people who came up is Saddam Hussein. And <laughs> Qadha, you know, the pop star Qadham. I don't know if I'm pronouncing uh, it. I don't think so. But he's like a famous Iraqi pop star and there's not a lot. And yeah, yeah. Saddam Hussein. They're, they're not really portrayed in movies. You know, you never see them the star of a movie like an Iraqi right. man or like even the Lebanese man. So, or any people, Middle Eastern people. So I really hope that in some ways that I can be that to people or... I really tried to, even on my platform, I interviewed Boba Malone. She was a former congressional candidate and she's um, in charge of the Bedford government. She's one of the select boards. I put her on my platform because I want people to be able to have those role models, you know? Yeah. Sometimes people who aren't people of color don't understand the importance of representation. Like imagine growing up and never seeing a lot of people besides maybe your parents that are successful that look like you, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So I can definitely attest to that. I feel like growing up, I didn't really have a female role model. It wasn't really Mm -hmm. until high school that, do you know who George Clooney is? Oh yeah. Do you know him? Yes. So I hate that I have to introduce her through George Clooney, but I always say like Amal Clooney is such a badass. Like she, oh my gosh, guys, she is an international human rights lawyer and she works um with the UN uh she's a professor she you know brought ISIS to court she's just like she's amazing and I feel like she's a perfect example of like he's been with supermodels he's been with all these beautiful oh my gosh but she's also intelligent and confident so she's Lebanese she she was she's um British as well but like just like her work and and following her is just inspirational and shows that like I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it shows no. like that um, the beauty is in everything. It's also intelligence and confidence because that's in many ways how she won him. She didn't really need a man and he made him want her more probably. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're so right. <laughs> to talk more about, you know, what, what I wanted to cover here today Um, have you feel like you've ever like gone through a period where it's like, you know, you probably have these preconditioned beliefs because of your family or because of maybe your experiences in the past. Have you feel like, like, do you think in the last year or so that you've gone through this period of growth or, you know, tell me about what growth means to you? Growth really means, I think of like, when I think of that, I think of revival, re like being reborn, um, you know, we're always changing and evolving and I'm never a finished product. There's some things I still need to work on. I think one memory that hits me the most was last year during February. It was a really hard time for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I had lost some friends. I was feeling really stressed. Um, I had worked at, you know, a retail place for a seasonal job and I was hoping I was going to get renewed. That didn't happen. And I felt really crushed. I felt I had low self-esteem. It was really bad during that time. And I had to, you know, from the past experience I had, I had to, you know, tell myself to snap out of it, you know? I was like, all right, I'm going to start reading more. I'm going to take advantage that I get out of school earlier. This was around March, not February, my bad. And I'm going to also, you know, try to connect with new people and just focus on evolving myself. And I really think a part of it is what, you know, Oprah said this and so true. What is the next best thing I could do to help me get to that goal? Right. Right. So 
let's say that you're feeling really bad about your grades. Okay, instead of complaining about it, maybe the next best thing you can do is pull out your French textbook. Maybe go get a tutor, maybe get an app. Like, you know, it's time to stop with excuses because, you know, a lot of people make up excuses. I don't have the time, I don't have the motivation. You had the time and motivation to be FaceTiming like <laughs> your girlfriend. You had the time and motivation <laughs> to be scrolling through Instagram. Right. You had the time and motivation to do all these things. You have the time and motivation to work on yourself. So right. stop crying. <laughs> it's like, grow a little bit of a backbone. You know, tough love. I talk to myself like this. All oh, the absolutely. Time. Absolutely. I was so raised I think, on tough love. Yeah. So I basically, that was the thing I had to tell myself. I'm like, all right, stop complaining, work towards your goals. And do things that are also making you healthy. So like lesson maybe on the junk food, start taking walks, um, start talking to yourself nicely because the longest place you have, the longest relationship you have is with yourself. It's not with your boyfriend or girlfriend, not with Mm -hmm. your parents and not with your friends. So you need to make your mind a beautiful place to be in with like positive affirmations and positive thinking, you know? It takes time, but it's like a habit. You learn it over time. For sure. And and I think- everything you said is so true. I, I mean, since I've been here, it's been like a, com- at BU, so it's been like a complete crazy, you know, I've started over essentially. I've, I've been able to really shape my lifestyle to be what I want it to be. And you're so right. There is that accountability point where it's like, you know, I had the time to FaceTime. I had the time to be on Instagram or on um, Netflix uh, you know, I should have the time to go for a walk or I should have the time to read or pray or really just like, you know, recenter myself. And that's definitely one form of growth. That's so important for sure. So I was raised a certain way mm-hmm. and coming to university really pushed me to think outside of that box. And Mm -hmm. um, it's not to say that I was raised in in a negative way or any or anything. Um, It's just sort of like being exposed to all these different types of lifestyles. Have you ever had something like that in your life? Um, To an extent, I do agree with that. Um, But with me, the thing is, like, when you are raised in a Middle Eastern household, you're not taught anything wrong. You're just taught something different. It's more of a collectivism type of culture. We think more of everyone, um, family, and like the long picture and what is right in that yeah. sense. American culture, it's more individualistic about what, what yourself matters and yourself first. Um, so with me, there is certain things that I do because being raised here that I don't necessarily have the same opinion as people in my family do. And it is kind of hard because sometimes I feel like I'm not American enough. And then there's times where I don't feel like I'm Arabic, like Arab enough because I have these conflicting opinions. Like what, what do you feel like you're conflicted with? Um, I don't necessarily, I don't know. For example, like, I'm trying to like word this correctly. So like, I think that in some ways that I do believe that your family is important and that matters. And I do believe that people should take care of their parents when, till they're older. And I do agree with that aspect, but I don't agree that all your decisions need to be about um, getting married and having kids. I don't think that should be the primary thing. I do think the American side of me thinks that your career and that aspect should be your number one. Mm -hmm. That is some conflicted opinions. I do believe in more of like, I am a bit more of like a free spirit. I believe go with the flow, like let it let be. And Middle Eastern people, we're not judgmental. We just, we kind of have like a one way of thinking. So okay. there, there's like, you know, there is that aspect. But my other Middle Eastern aspect is the thing that I really love about our culture is I always have to have dinner sitting down with my family. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love talking to my family. It's something that's important. I do believe that's a foundation for a healthy person. I do think that matters. And I do believe, yeah, I do believe having a good, strong moral background is also good. So I try to take a little bit of everything and try it's to- It's so find hard. It. It's hard. It's so hard. Especially like, so obviously, um, you know, I'm here studying in hopes of getting a strong career. That's like why I'm mm-hmm. here, right? Obviously, I want to learn and grow my mind. But 
there's the proponent of if I want to start a family and, you know, as a woman, how am I going to find a career that will allow me to balance both a family lifestyle that you describe in addition to this career, this passion of mine, this, this fire burning within me, where am I going to find that common balance and, and ground, you know? Yeah, I do agree with that. I personally, I've heard, um, there's this YouTuber I watch and she said this, like you can have it all. It mm-hmm. just different proponent, different moments in your life are for different things. Um, personally for me right now, I really prioritize like my career, my goals. And I also am a man. So it's, I don't have the fertility thing that's like clicking and it's mm-hmm. much harder for women because they're having other women telling them, oh, you need to get married soon. So I don't have that issue. But I do think that you need to think about what makes you comfortable and what makes you happy because those relatives or those family friends, they think they're doing what's best for them because that's the decision they made. You know, it's confirmation bias. They think, well, I got married at 18 and I had three kids and I did it. So must mean that it works for everyone, but everyone is living different lives. You know, Mm -hmm. there's people that really, who are just happy with, you know, working a nine to five, you know, having two kids and having a fence over their house. There's some people that like, for example, Amal Clooney, she shooted for the star. She got, she got what she wanted. She did have to, you know, wait a little while till she got married, but it worked out perfectly for her. And there's some people that got married earlier and it worked out for them. So I'm really against comparison, you know, like people just because it worked for you, doesn't mean it worked for me. And that's something as you get older, you're going to have to deal with a lot more. I don't know. Have you had like older people, you know, saying, oh, you should do this. You should do that because of their own experiences. So my, I got like really lucky with my parents. My parents are super like accepting. They're Mm -hmm. they're supportive. They're very supportive in all of my dreams. Um, But it's like, I feel like my dad is more, you know, try to stay out of relationships, focus on your goals, yeah. like don't let it slow you down, which is like, which is definitely like not the typical, not the typical at all. I'm not saying like dads out there, are like everyone should get married, but like <laughs> yeah. my dad is especially supportive of my like career drive. And of course my mom as well. Um, yeah. but it's more of like, just like me as a woman, I'm, I'm also the type of girl that like, I love to plan and I Mm -hmm. love to like, you know, work towards a goal. So it's tough because it's like, you know, logistically, this is what I would love my life to look like. But, you know, in reality, something is gonna have to be sacrificed, you know, at least in a little bit. And um, I don't know, I feel like our culture is what it is. But I also like I'm taking command of, you know, being of both worlds and trying to make the most of it. It's just the actual challenges. It's it's tough, you know? Yeah, I do agree with that. I Luckily, I, my parents are both, they really push get your degree first. That's important and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. I also learned, this is something I've struggled with, is Tell living me. living in the present. Yeah. Um, you're a go-getter say it. too. So say it, when you say it call, louder. <laughs> you probably do this too, knowing us because we're both ambitious. Uh, when you get a goal, you're like, all right, I got this on to the next thing. Do you have, do you sometimes do that? When I tell you, I don't give myself mercy or grace for anything I've ever accomplished. Like I'll look back, I'll be like, wow, that was a cute memory. Like good job. But like, I, I can, when I tell you, I cannot be present and be like, wow, just like yeah, enjoy this moment. I've struggled with. The reason is the thing I've done that's really helped me is to really understand that the present is a gift. That gift mm-hmm. is for the gifted, that idea. Mm-hmm. So the reason is the present is something that you currently have that you, for example, let's say you're going on vacation. Let's say that you're going back to Beirut. You're having an amazing time, you know, beautiful country, beautiful, well, that beautiful city, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you must be thinking, oh my God, I can't wait to go to vacation. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be relaxing. And in the moment you could be not doing your schoolwork. You could be putting, you could just be ignoring other things, but you're forgetting you're going to have to pack those things up. You're going to have to carry that bag. You're going to have to go then deal with security. You're going to have to do all this stuff. And you're not really living in the moment where, all right, I don't have to wake up early. I get to focus on this. Yeah. get to be with my friends. You have to really try to absorb and just be in the moments, you know? That's something that I've struggled with. I'll be like, 
all right, I just accomplished it. I just accomplished this. I need to do something else. Like I need to be on to the next thing, but you really need to take a moment and absorb the things that are going around you, you know? So that is an issue with everyone because we've just all gotten impatient because of social media and technology. Oh my God. Yeah, no, for sure. We are definitely like the generation of, we need like that immediate gratification. We need that, that constant, like, and it's, it's, it's like destroying our mental health, but do you feel that like, um, that you maybe would not have been able to accomplish all that you have if you didn't have that, like that fighter in you that, you know, that, that crazy drive to continue to want to, um, you know, achieve more, even after you've done so much work. I do believe that having that fast paced mindset, just going for the goals. Um, I also feel like that's helped me to stop being a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. There is many people who are more intelligent than I am, more, maybe even more capable, but they just, they just keep trying to focus. It needs to be perfect. It needs to be done. This they'll have something that's amazing quality of work, whether it's a book, whether it's a YouTube video, and they'll just stress about it and they will never get done and never get uploaded because they keep thinking they need to perfect it. I don't really have that issue. I'm very confident in the things I do. Um, when I make a video, when I write something, I think it's best quality. I don't really stress about it as long and I just move on and go to the thing. So I do recommend people do that. That is the benefit of being impatient. It helps you get a lot more done in a short period of time. Mm. So that I agree with. The bad thing about it is sometimes I will be in a social setting or I will be in like, I'll be in a year. For example, in my junior year of high school, I was just really excited for senior year and I was just ready to leave. Um, I had wish I had taken more time to really enjoy that year and enjoy more of my high school experience instead of to keep thinking and stressing about and getting ready for college. Yeah. That was something I sort of regret, but I really am taking time to absorb it this year. So there are some benefits and cons. And I really think that you should take a middle ground. We don't want to overcorrect and be super impatient and not be able to live in the moment, but we don't want to be those crazy perfectionists who never get stuff done. So I think there are some you got to find that great middle ground. Yeah. I think life is all really honestly about balance. Um, so for all of the trips that I've gone on, just, just so you know, I've literally vlogged every single trip I videotaped, I've taken like actual like vlog diaries. I've done, um, uh, like just like B roll shots of, you know, the cities I've gone to with the full intention of making videos. And I literally have (laughs) footage from at least three or four cities that are just sitting there. And I just like haven't gotten around to even editing the videos or watching the footage again, because I feel like I have that perfectionist, like that, Mm -hmm. oh, you know, is it going to be perfect if I, if I get it done um, and work on it, you know? Yeah. That's how I had with my YouTube channel. So when I had my TV show, my local TV show for Bedford TV, I really didn't have the confidence to start my own channel because I'm like, oh, if it doesn't go well, I'm going to feel bad. I'm not going to get this many views. And when I was on the local TV channel, you know, I didn't really worry about that. There wasn't like as much ambition. It was like, I did it. I did that. But the thing I needed to realize is when you ever do whatever it is, whether it's writing, dancing, singing, the first times you're going to do it are going to be bad. Accept that, get over that hurdle and just realize that. But eventually they're going to get better. And they're going to improve, you know, sometimes when we see these singers or we see these CEOs, we think it was an uphill trajectory, like it would just all went amazing. You don't see the time they've gotten fired from their jobs. You don't see the times where they told they weren't good enough. You don't see the times where they thought about even ending their own life. That's not portrayed as much in the media. It never is. You're right. So you really just need to realize that the first five times you do something are going to be horrible. They're just going to be bad. And you're going to take notes. You're going to look at them and like, all right, I shouldn't have maybe looked this way, looked up the whole time I was making right. the video. Right. Maybe I shouldn't have, you know, saying that wrong note. And that's just what you really need to do. And just accept it. Right. It's not going to be perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. For me personally, I have like this big fear of time. 
And Mm -hmm. I think it goes straight back to what you just said. It's that, you know, like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, will I have time to do this, to do that in in this lifetime? And it it seriously is just about really like living in the moment and making the most Mm -hmm. out of every second of your life. Do you ever feel guilty when you go through a couple of days and you haven't done anything productive? Oh my God. When I tell you like... like it's it's so bad it like it's it's terrible like today i'm not gonna lie so i i have some plans uh for the end of the weekend it's one of my friend's birthdays and um i'm like planning him like this little surprise um Uh, like gets yeah it's something small but i completely finished all of my homework for the week yesterday and it gave me such a confidence boost i was like oh my god look at me and i'm like going to the gym showering like making it to classes that's I feed off of that stuff but when I have lazy days I feel like a loser I feel like such a loser see that's something I really have an issue with um so during winter breaks I stuff like that the way I compensate for that is I read or maybe I make videos or stuff. so tell me what are you like what are you reading right now what do you like to read so I really like reading um, Robert Greene. He had this one book called The Laws of Human Nature. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good, it's a really good book talking about, you know, how we're all have these human and like animal instincts within us. Uh, One one that's really example is that we are all social creatures. He talked about Mm -hmm. this. So we really need social validation. That's something that's really hard for us. Mm -hmm. Um, because we're pack animals. If you weren't part of a pack, you would literally die. Like, how are you going to hunt animals? How are you going to survive? So we really crave that validation. And, you know, you could be saying, well, that doesn't happen now. It does actually with social media followers, with likes, with, you know, high school, you know, not Absolutely. feeling like you fit in. Mm-hmm. People who don't have a lot of friends are the most miserable. It's really sad, but it all stems back to that um, theory. And the thing that also... I think, um, I think that really affects us with our ambition because, you know, back then they really needed to be, you know, the strongest in terms of like physical and like being able to survive. I like this in terms of my career. Mm -hmm. Um, During the summer, I needed, I needed to schedule things out and do things that were productive or Mm -hmm. I feel miserable. Yeah. Uh, I am the, the, the times I feel the worst is when I have nothing planned and I'm just bored. I don't like free time. I like things done. I literally you know, are you that way too? It's very hard to find people like us. I'm, I'm pulling out my agenda right now just to show you. Like I am completely packed with like assignments and plans. And this is literally like my happiness. Like I enjoy being organized yeah. and, and having things to do all the time. You know, I do. Yeah, I do. Like, for example, I do like having I like hanging out with my friends and I do try to integrate. I'm like, all right, I need to make sure I have social hours and hang out with my friends. Mm -hmm. I just don't like being home alone and just watching TV or watching videos because I just feel like what am I contributing? Like, how is this going to be beneficial for anything to my long-term goals? I think it drives me can... crazy. I don't know how people can go through like three months and not do yeah. anymore. Like, yeah. what? I, I know. I know. I think, I think honestly, we can attribute some of that to our culture too. Um, like, like you mentioned earlier, the whole eating concept. I remember I was out to dinner with my roommate and we were at a mall and there was just this guy like, you know, sipping his wine, having his, his pasta, whatever we were out and he was sitting alone and I, and I looked to her and I was like, that stuff makes me so sad. She's like, why? And I'm like, what do you mean? Why? I'm like, the guy's dining by himself. Like it's, it's, I, yeah, I think it's it sad. Feel, it's like a social thing for us. Like I, I feel uncomfortable when I eat. I always I need to be around people. Like I always need to feel like, you know, that's why I think I've been struggling here a lot. Cause it's this really weird independence that it's like, Oh, I can hang with people. If I want, I can walk alone. If I want, I don't need to like, you know, for me yeah. and, and my family, I'm like, Oh, Becca, Peter, do you guys want to go for a ride? Like if I have an errand, everyone's going, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. There's that sense of community all the time. Yeah. I do think that's really instilled in us. Um, I know for a lot of people, this is one of the downsides I've noticed with Western culture, even though it has many benefits like free right. will, independence mm-hmm. and career. I love that. One of the downsides I've noticed is there's not really that structure And sometimes people in high school look for that community and validation through like, this is an extreme example, but through gangs, through people that aren't the best influences, people do things in groups they would never do alone. Oh, Um, that's so true. That's so true. Like, do you think people would talk shit about people, spread rumors, or be so malicious and evil, like with cyberbullying and all these things that happen? 
Mm. If it's not in a group setting, of course not. Even people who've like killed Rob Banks, they do it with other people. So I do think that's another thing I've seen a lot of people who are so intelligent, who have so much ability. And it really, it even hurts me to see that they could be something amazing, but they're surrounding themselves with people who are losers. Mm. It's it's pretty harsh to say, but these it's like they have all this potential and abilities and they're just throwing them down the drain. And I feel for them. And I, you know, I really think that is something that really needs to be talked about um, with people that just because someone's your friend doesn't mean they always have your best intention. And mm-hmm. I really talk about that in my book, identifying who's a good friend and who isn't. Wow. Yeah. No, that is so true. And um, that's why I also think it's so important that you're picky with who you spend your time with and that you're picky with mm-hmm. who you decide like you said, choose your friends, choose your friends, because um, ultimately, if you aren't secure with yourself, and there are going to be times where you're not secure with yourself, you're going to look to the people around you, you know, when you're at your weakest, you're going to rely on others. And and depending on who those people are, it could be a detriment, or it could be, you know, a boost to, you know, who you are, you know, you need people around you that are going to motivate you. Yeah, we're social animals. It's really important that we do have friends. But they just need to be people of quality. So I wanted to recommend a book to you. So I'm actually reading it for classes here. It's called Sapiens. Um, all of the listeners should definitely check it out as well. It's by Yuval Noah Harari. Um, oh. And have you heard of it? I don't know. I have. He- I've heard about it. I'm in okay. A couple- I've heard that, that that's been recommended to me before. Oh my God. It's, I guess it's really popular, but it basically talks about um, humanity from the start of time to like where we are now. And mm-hmm. it's exactly what you mentioned about how we're social animals and how like the concept of ideas, like things like borders of nations are just ideas, things like um, money and currency, they're ideas, religion, ideas that if we don't as a group believe in something or um, contribute value to a concept. Mm-hmm. It's just our imagination. Things like that, that like so blow true. my mind. It blow my yeah. mind. Like it's just when I heard that quote, I was watching. It was like a, it was a video I was watching about gangs and murders. Those a lot of those people they did those in group settings because they would never do it alone. And it's yeah. so true. Like it is things that you would never just do alone. You know, you are really impacted by the people that you're with and. That's why I really recommend that people look at what, whether, what is someone contributing to their life? You know, mm-hmm. one story I really want to share is I was really friends with this one person and all she would do is talk about herself. Like it was mm-hmm. always her victim parade. Oh, he doesn't love me. And then she'd get back together with him and <laughs> she, would, she would just have all this oh, drama. Oh no. They would never, because people who don't have a lot of confidence, she wasn't doing after school activities. She wasn't doing all these things. She was so self-absorbed with her own problems, with her own issues, because she wasn't going for her goals, that she wasn't being a good friend. She wasn't being a good student. She wasn't being the best person she could be. And that's why it's really important to create your create yourself a life filled with everything. You know, a relationship won't fulfill you. A career won't fulfill you. So you got to get that career, got to get that friendship and got to get academics. It's all about mm. mixing it mm-hmm. and nothing's going to be 50-50. Back to what you said about the groups. Do you ever feel like there's a need to conform to a certain group? Do you ever feel yeah. like um, based on the environment you're in that you need to really check yourself and sort of see like, okay, how am I going to fit in? Like, would you change yourself personally if people around so you were different? I personally don't change myself. I believe I have a lot of um, different elements to I am. Mm-hmm. I am a I, this is how I would describe myself. And, you know, sometimes with um, people like me, people assume that I'm just nerdy or I'm just, you know, one particular way, but I'm also very funny. I love things about pop culture. You know, that's mm-hmm. how I know about them. You know, that celebrities. Yeah. I'm also very, I am nerdy. I like talking about history and philosophy, but I also love talking about fashion and clothes and designs and stuff like that I also love talking about like marketing and all these things I have a whole different components to myself so with my friends I really try to be friends with all different types of people Mm -hmm. and that's what I think really helps me with my videos um 
I'm able to, you know, really connect with all different types of people. There's people, boys on the lacrosse team who watch my videos to like 28 year old women to, you know, I just have a wide range of audience because I do believe that I am very universal. My advice really connects to all types of people. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. At the same time, I do get what you're saying with, um, I do believe that when I am around, I think more in a culture aspect, mm -hmm. you are kind of taught to code switch, you know? Um, so for example, with my friends in Bedford, I love Bedford. I love living here. They don't, the people I'm, the majority population is um, white. So I don't really get to talk about my Middle Eastern hair. I do talk about it, but we can't really connect on Middle Eastern heritage right, yeah. or, you know, Ramadan when we fast or other things that other people wouldn't understand or the fact that I'm planning for college that I'm going to commute for a lot of people, you know, as soon as they're 18, they need to move out of the house. Right. For right, me, right. in my household, not all middle Eastern families, but like, and a lot of them were encouraged to stay with our parents till we're married. So I do believe that sometimes it is a bit harder to explain to people those things. And then sometimes with my um, Middle Eastern side, when I tell them I want to study digital media or the things I'm interested in, they're like, oh, you should do this. You should do that. And it's also hard to connect with them on certain philosophies I have. So I do get what you're saying. About yeah. I do sometimes not code switch, but there's certain topics I avoid with each side because yeah. I know we're not going to see to eye to eye. I feel like for me right now, um, it's sort of like the political thing, especially mm -hmm. it's sort of like trying to understand where other people are coming from and realizing that I should be more open-minded to other opinions as well and more accepting mm -hmm. um especially can you know considering the way that I was like raised and like you said the community these things that were literally like conditioned or instilled within us um at what point is it okay to you know adjust to concede to mm -hmm. to learn or or to like really just try to sympathize or empathize with others do you know what I mean it's it goes back to that balance point where it's like a adapting to certain environments you're in while also not losing yourself and losing your identity and maybe even growing as a person through those experiences that's so true um there is a I do believe there's always room for growth and that's what I try to really instill is being friends with people with different cultures and different beliefs um mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are not friends with a lot of people who are middle eastern or people with different political backgrounds and they're just in an echo chamber. So they're hearing things. Oh, like for example, if someone really believes that like, they really believe, I don't know, the sky's blue, the sky's orange and all their friends tell them the sky's orange, their teacher tells them, their parents, and one person disagrees with them and says the sky is blue, even though that's the truth, they are not going to get their opinion changed. Mm -hmm. That's just how the way they're instilled in their values are. Um, so sometimes if they share an opinion, I had like a phone call with someone, we didn't necessarily agree on the same politics. I tried to understand where they're coming from, you know? Yeah. And all right, they believe this because they believe in that way, that's going to benefit society as overall. That's why they believe. I don't believe people believe things because they're most of the time, it's a very small participant. Most people don't believe things because they're evil or bad people. Right. Yeah. They believe that because that's what they think works and that's what they think is good. And they may look at your opinion and be like, oh, they believe this because they're a bad person. They want to infringe on my rights. They want to take this away. They want to do this. But you believe that because you think that's what's best for society or that's what's best overall. And no one I think is ever coming from evil intentions. I really try to instill that in my mind and mm. try to understand their perspective or just stay away from the conversation as a whole. I think it's very it's very important to find that find that middle ground though with people and be open to listen and to to make peace between each other even if you have to agree to disagree um it's definitely something that I I would say I'm strong in do you know what I'm saying like I feel that yeah. this You're is one of I feel like I feel like it's one of my stronger points to be able to listen to other people mm -hmm. and try to feel with them and even though it's a little unsettling sometimes when it like attacks anything you thought was right. I think it's so important mm -hmm. to really sit down and be like, you know, 
these people. They I think that's like, um, I don't know if it's where you're from, but I know Lebanon, Lebanon is a very diverse country, more diverse than the U.S. or any European country. You have Muslims, Christians, Yazidi yeah, people. Yeah, religiously, religiously, we have, I mean, for the Middle East, we have both Christians and Muslims. So we're we're like coexisting and stuff. But yeah, um, it's more of like, you know, Lebanon is all over the world. There's 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 Lebanese everywhere, and it's sort of like adapting to being American mm-hmm. and then Lebanese. But then, like you said, too Lebanese to be American, but too American to be Lebanese. It's yes, but I do think with them, they've I, I could be wrong, but I would assume that they're taught to you know work with other people with different opinions because most countries, like for example, Saudi Arabia, are countries where it's a hundred percent Muslim, or other countries where it's a hundred percent Christian. They don't really have to deal with people with conflicting opinions so i don't know is is that i the mean thing with lebanon do they know how to deal with it better than people in the u.s or people in saudi arabia or i don't know honestly i would argue maybe not against that but definitely to the point that you mentioned that we're, we're religiously um like obviously we have people of various religious backgrounds but i feel like generally speaking the middle eastern mentality is stubborn I feel like that may yeah. be in our DNA that may run it's through my way or the highway. <laughs> or the highway. <laughs> um, but I think like our need to adapt to countries like that. I mean, some people do it well. Some people don't like I have a good amount of friends that like their parents are strict. Like they're in, yeah. de- they're in denial that they live in the United States of America. They're in the denial that it's not, you know, back home you know and all and, their friends are the same people and all right their, right yeah. and it's and it's they hard to not- find that it's it clashes all the time so again back to the adaptation and the growth that you know you need to find where you stand in things and be willing to grow and to adapt to the environment you're in otherwise I feel like success comes at a much higher price do you know what I mean mm-hmm. I it's, agree it's with difficult that to succeed last thing I wanted to sort of touch on was like identity again do you feel like you are comfortable with who you are or do you feel like there's more there's more to come um I do believe that I don't really believe in this whole mentality that's really pushed on that I am who I am I'm never going to change except Mm -hmm. me for who I am yeah I believe there's always room to grow and to growth um there was sophomore year. I thought I was going to stay the same way. Junior year, um, even this year, like a month, I really tried to work things that are that I have an issue with. Um, I used to not be active, I, but then I started incorporating walks, and that's something I've really incorporated into my habits. I, re- I read more. Um, I expanded my social horizons and started being friends with different people. And there's some things that I do think that I still want to improve on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anyone should really stop refining. You don't want to be hard on yourself and not love who you are. But acceptance, I think there is a correlation with laziness. Um, people I've met who are not the most motivated tend to have a lot of acceptance. And it's good to have a de- healthy amount. But if it's too much, you're not really going to expand. I don't know. Do you think I'm wrong? I, that's just my take on it. A hundred percent. No, I agree with you a thousand percent. It's like if you are comfortable, you're not gonna, I mean, this is how I've run my life. This is how I've gotten as far as I have in life is Mm -hmm. I'm constantly looking for the next thing. And like you said, there comes a little bit of negative with that. But if you are comfortable all the time, like, I don't think there's been a day where I've been comfortable in my own skin, to be honest. And that's definitely like, you're not, I mean, like, Yes you and have to no. Have some amount of confidence. I I little. am. I do have confidence, but it's more of like, you know, who am I? Why am I here? What do I want? And I, and this is something that I've really struggled with, until I got here, mm-hmm. where I'm like really pushing myself to, you know, who am stand. I? Who am I? You know, like what what do I stand for? Why do I stand for the things that I do? Um, you know, what am I going to do with my time here? That's like the biggest yeah. thing. You know, like. What is my calling? Um, obviously, like there's body image and all that stuff, which always I think fluctuates with everybody. But for me, it's more of like I feel like there's so much. There's a side of me that I just don't tap into. That creates oh, yeah. that deep. That you know, I. It's because society puts labels on us. Um, I really think about it in terms of like religion or like terms of culture. That person's real. I think where this is kind of like maybe a Middle Eastern thing or an. I think it's more of an immigrant thing. That person is 
person of morals, of character, that person isn't. We Even in American culture, that for example, that person's a nerd, that person's a jock, she's a cheerleader, she's emo. Like people like to categorize people. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes we feel like we w- wear that label, you know? I feel like because I've achieved so much at such a young age and you have as well, that people may think that we are maybe boring or that we are just all about our academics or all of our goals, but there's so much side to us. We're fun, we're witty, we're good looking. Like there's a lot to us <laughs> than what is, what is perceived. You know, no, people yeah, just love yeah. to stick people in boxes. No, I know, that, absolutely. I hope, do you relate to that? No, yeah, yeah. I mean, I there is a lot that I don't put out there as well, you know, that there's like these sides to us that are, are deeper and that mm. um, we do have those crazy sides. We do have the, yeah. And, and I think, you know, we can have a whole podcast episode about social media yeah, and what, what, what version of ourselves we put out to the world. I'm really glad you could be on the show today, Fahad. Like I yeah. really enjoyed our, for our discussion. No, I feel like course. me and you have been friends for 10 years. I know. So- <laughs> <laughs> definitely I feel like if past life I don't believe in past lives but if they're real me and you were oh other. yes oh oh for sure for sure and I feel like you know we could definitely I think we should do this again sometime yeah we should maybe you should come on my YouTube channel uh, I would love to I would love yeah, to we'll have honestly, a little collab yeah, oh my gosh stay well, tuned follow uh, me on Instagram uh, <laughs> yeah I was just- literally just gonna ask what can you tell them what your your handle is yeah. so that they can come uh, go and watch your videos, all your motivation. Yeah. So my Instagram is Fahad Ken Eldon and my YouTube is Fahad Ken Eldon. So okay, spell F-A-H-A-D- it for us. F A H A D K E N A L D E N. Awesome. All right. And I'll definitely be tagging you in my yeah. Instagram. I have a new video on how to move on from the past. So Ooh, oh, thank you for being on the show. Thank you guys for listening. I'm so glad to start this new season. And I hope that you guys took away some, um, some pretty deep things from this episode, but I'll catch you guys next week. Bye Fahad. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.